I think it started. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for uh, for your time uh, once again. You're most welcome. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to ask you the next questions uh, about. Um, so we have discussed a lot of issues about Germany and the German economy. So uh, what do you think about uh, the Muslim people? Uh, how should they integrate with Germans? <laughs> Well, this is an incredibly complicated topic that it might need maybe a few episodes just to talk about it. That's why I bring the table because that is my also my concern as well because now I'm, I'm a little bit... It's a very complicated issue. Uh, well, let's start with Germany has immigrants from all around the Muslim world. So you don't have Muslims in Germany. Like there is no Muslim group in Germany. They're not a homogeneous kind of group. You have Turkish Muslims, you have Kurdish Muslims, you have Asians from different countries, Muslims, uh, you have Arab Muslims, and they're all a different type of Muslims. Okay, so we're not about religion, I'm saying like how they behave. Because it's not just about religion, it's about also about the culture that they bring into Germany and then how they interpret Islam in Germany. So when we talk about Muslims in Germany, the majority of the time when we talk about is the Turkish Muslims, because they are the vast majority. And the rest of Muslims are just like minorities here and there, but it's just the Turkish Muslims in Germany. So any kind of questions about one group wouldn't be fair enough to because there is no one group. Because in Bangladesh, you have Bangladeshi Muslims. Here you have maybe 20 different types of background and they're all different. A Bangladeshi Muslim is very different from a Moroccan Muslim, from a Turkish Muslim, from all of that. So the question has to be in a, in a different, asking in, let's say in a different way. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, the, from, from uh, the question, I, I, I make it more easier for you to understand. Okay. For example, um, I have a family, I have a daughter. So I'm a bit conscious about the, the Islamic environment. Can I provide an Islamic environment for my children, upcoming children in Germany? Or No, no you can't. No, there, there is nothing. I, I would say that uh, in Germany at the moment, you can't provide an Islamic environment or a Muslim okay, environment. Just let me complete the uh, questions. So okay. if... if can't, then what do you think? What should we do as a Muslim in Germany? How should we prepare ourselves for the... For well, it's not that. It's about just a... It's a matter of numbers. Okay, so number one, the Muslim, like I said, the Muslims in Germany are in groups, your national groups. And because they're all distributed all around the country. So there is some cities that have a lot of Muslims, which they have might have created, you know, the mosque, the community, a small community. But in general, compared to other countries, the Muslims here are really scattered. So when you talk about a Muslim community, um, each group hangs around with its own group and the numbers are really small. So it's not big enough to actually create a like a, an, an environment, let's say, in this kind of sense, a Muslim environment like in the US or the UK. But the US has way more Muslim immigration. They have been there for a long time. They have created their own mosques, school institutions, all of that. Germany is really new in this. So yep. whoever's going to come here, they have to think that there is no community here. I need to build the community. If you come to Germany and think, well, everything is ready. Everything, you know, the mosque is ready. All the school is ready. Madrasa is ready. All of that. There's nothing here. Okay. So you have to come with a mindset that I want to build something in Germany. And that's just the reality of it. Okay. Then the, the, the question would come here. As you say, the U.S. already implemented this culture because they are not new like us in Germany. But U.S. 50 years ago, maybe 70 years ago, they were like Germany. The people who came 70 years ago, so they struggle and then they developed and they now they have the fruits on the table. Yes, true, hundred percent, hundred percent. Yes, so when the how you, what do you think about? these kind of scenarios in Germany's perspective. Well, it, it maybe in Germany in 50 long years, term, it will be like that. Planning. Maybe, yes, but in 50 years, it might become like that, maybe for the next generation. But at the moment, it's not like that. And one of the problems is not like that. It's the nationalism. 
When people immigrate to the U.S., they see themselves as Americans because the American identity is an immigrant identity. So if they don't hold back to their, so they say, okay, I'm American of this origin, okay? But they see themselves first as Americans who live in the U.S. Immigrants here in Germany still come to Germany and they might be first, second, third generation and they st even they would have the German passport and everything. And they know German quite well, perfectly, probably. They still they say, see themselves as I'm Bangladeshi, I'm Lebanese, I'm Moroccan, I'm Turkish, I'm Kurdish. They still hold to their national identity. And as long as they're holding to their national identity, there is actually, in my opinion, a very little chance or opportunity for to build a Muslim community because there is no one group that is dominant. So if there will be any Muslim community, it has to be a community of all those people together. The Bangladeshi, the Indian, the Pakistani, all the, you can't bring the nationalities into it. Otherwise, no group is going to be strong enough to actually build any community. So you leave your nationality behind. You come to Germany and say, you know what? I'm going to become German. I'm a Muslim in Germany. And hence I build a Muslim community in Germany. Not, I am not replicating the Bangladeshi community in Germany. Because if you want to replicate that experience, many tried before, the, those who came here before tried and it failed all of them. There is no one successful community which tried to replicate their home country in Germany. Uh, so if they want to come, this idea of having a, a Bangladeshi community is not going to work. Because I've, I've, seen, I've seen a lot of Indians, because they are Indians, so they are Hindus people. They are replicating German cultures. They are celebrating Christmas. Personally, as a Muslim, I believe uh, Muslims have some principles. So my next questions can be, as I believe in, I'm Muslim, so I believe my ethics and my principles. And I also want to integrate with Germans, not to follow their religions, but to integrate with them. How can Muslims people integrate with them? Or what is the best practices? I wouldn't them? say, personally, I would not say that there's any problem with being Muslim in Germany. But, but, here's a big but. Uh, most people conflate their religion with their culture. So they want the Asian, Bangladeshi, Indian, Pakistani, Arabic, Turkish culture, part of their religion. They think it's part of their religion. And they come to Germany, they think, <coughs> uh, they bring those traditions with them, this culture, which is not Islamic culture in a way. Okay, it's a, local culture in a local country for local conditions that has an Islamic overview on top of it. But if a German becomes Muslim, what would be different? I mean, like if I, we have German converts who do become Muslim and if you talk to them, you would say, why, ask them like, why would a German convert start to wear jubba or anything like that? It doesn't make any sense here in Germany. It's not part of their culture. So if you come back from, you know, if you come from an Asian country to here and you want to wear your jubba and you want to wear your whatever traditional clothing because you think it's an Islamic clothing and this is the idea of Islamic clothing, okay, or the burqa, whatever it is, okay, uh, to Germany and think, ah, oh, and I'm bringing, uh, this is Islam and this is, no, it's not Islam, that's your culture. And then if you go to Japan or any other country, uh, they have a different interpretation of that culture. So, when you come, you have to change. Obviously, there is no doubt about that. There will be a lot of changes. And then you have to have a very retrospective kind of meditation on what is really Islam and what is my culture. And then you have to separate both of them. Come with the Islam, leave the culture out. And if you come with the Islam, you will be fine. Because you will be fine anywhere. There is no country. Let's say you come here, you don't want to eat pork. There's so much, many vegetarian options. You know, don't come here, oh, there's no halal food. You can be vegetarian. There's no problem, you know, of is nothing for, you know, makes you force you to eat meat everywhere. Okay, let's say you come here, you don't want to drink. That's fine. I mean, there's a lot of Germans who don't drink. There's nothing that stops you from being a Muslim in Germany. So, but. You're going to come with a culture and say, oh, our work, we do this this way and the Germans do it differently. And then you want to superimpose your religion on the culture, then it's not going to work out. Then, you know what? Stay at home, let's say. So how about then um, 
if um, you are having invitations for your Christian colleague and she told you, uh, let's uh, have some party in our Christmas uh, celebration. So how should Muslim react on those? Uh, why why wouldn't the Muslim go to the party? I'm just ask, I'm asking you because I want to. No, but, no, but, no, but the question would be, why wouldn't a Muslim? If we reduce Islam to halal the and question, haram. The question can be, maybe the, the, the food they are providing to the devil can be it's not so, in the name of God, Allah. So you are not sure. And? I mean, I mean, these questions are very odd. Like, for example, in the Arab world, there are Christians in the Arab world. There are many Christians in the Arab world, especially in Lebanon, Syria, Jordan, Palestine. Uh, this type of question like, never happens. Like People just coexist and they live together and they eat with each other and all of that. Uh, let's say you went to a, a German party and they have meat. Nothing forces you to eat the meat. You can. There is always a vegetarian option. Nothing forces you to drink alcohol. There is always a non-alcoholic drink. So it, this is kind of mentality, unfortunately, and I've noticed that more in the Asian communities than others. And that's where, uh, not only in the Asian community, it's more like in the Gulf community as well. It has a Salafi flavor to it. And unfortunately, if you're going to come here with this kind of Salafi background, you're going to find it incredibly hard to integrate. You're going to find yourself isolated and insulated, you know, let's say from any effect from the outside. And you're going to be miserable here. So if you're going to be miserable here, maybe it's not the right country for you. Go to Saudi Arabia, then you will feel at home with all the other racist, you know, people who are a race against Asians. But at least you can feel, oh, it's this halal, this is haram, this is Islam here. You can do that. Yeah, thanks so much. So next, the, the, maybe the next questions can, can come, right? <laughs> you have uh, put out, you, you just said Salaf, Salafism, right? So, uh, for example, I'm coming from a background, from a developing country, where we have a lot of problems, a lot of issues. So, when I was, how, how I raised in my country, we have a different mentality. We, we are too much dependent on our um, uh, Maulanas, you know Maulanas, the people who is uh, leading the Islams. And so we don't know about Islams, but we are relying on those people. And they said everything is haram, that and that. So the, the question here, after living in Germany is almost four years, now I have an open mindness. I want to know about Islam, but I want to know the real Islam, not the Islam that has been uh, then trying to manipulate it. Yes, in Bangladesh. So, so the question is: so uh, for the people like Islam, Indo, Indo, Indo Indian peoples, how should they uh, search for the real Islam, not depending on the Saudi Arabians and their only cultures? How can they uh, broaden their mind and then? Well, the only thing I can say, and that's the only thing, they have to start reading. And unfortunately, that's the only way. They have to start reading, and not only books that are written by certain groups of people. Okay, They have to read wide. They have to read the Sira of the Prophet from a historical point of view. There are many books on that from a Western point of view, from many different views. So there is well, there's going to be a lot of effort into, let's say, deprogramming of your mind. And if you're going to come here and uh, let's say not do any kind of effort into doing that, you're just going to bring, let's say, the traditions and the customs here, which, by the way, I mean, the fact that they are coming to Germany means that there is something wrong with the Bangladeshi society. Okay, if they're going to, if they want to move out, there's something wrong in the Bangladeshi society. And let's say, that it's an economical issue and there's other issues. So their version of Islam, which is supposed to raise a society, is not doing it. Because by the default fact they want to move out of Bangladesh, means that there is something not working there. So the version of Islam, maybe that is practiced in Bangladesh, which, by the way, when the Arabs first became Muslims, they conquered and created an empire. Within 60 years, the Arab went you know, for the first Islamic empire, the Umayyad empire went from Spain all the way to India. So Islam, when was brought to them, it elevated them up to become an empire. And then it changed the world. 
Okay, there's no doubt about that. So what about the Islam that we have now? Is it creating a good country? So if it's not creating something positive, it's not lifting the people up, lifting the country up, lifting the economy, the culture, the everything up, then there's something we have to ask ourselves, is this the version of Islam really the, the version that was at the time of the Prophet? Because it's not having the same effect. Let's say if Islam is a medication, and then that given to the Arabs at that point lifted them up to create an empire, and then the same medication given now, but it's not having actually the opposite effect. You know, we are the conquered countries, we are the colonized countries, we are the subdued countries, where the country is, you know, being stepped on now. So we have to wonder, is the medication we're taking is a real version of the medication or are we being given something fake and until we start asking these questions we're not going to go anywhere we're still going to be stay the downtrodden the colonized the i mean let us think about the situation the political situation now you know we're not going to you know open the whole you know palestine issue but look at all the muslim and uh, it's like it took south africa a non-muslim country to defend Palestine in the international court and no Islam Muslim country did that. So we have to ask, are those countries really Muslim? That is a question that I would ask myself. Because if we can't do the simplest thing, what is Islam doing for us? And if Islam is not doing that for us, is it really Islam? Same. Because before it helped us, now it's not helping us. So are we really following our religion? Actually, uh, that's, a, that's a good point that you bring, bring here. As our, our Bangladesh is a Muslim country, so almost we have 90% uh, people are Muslim. Pakistan has 100% people are Muslim. So Islam is a blessing for us and we had never realized about it and never think about it, that how blissful we are. That's why we never have such kind of questions in our mind. The way you just elaborate the fact Mm -hmm. I'm 30 plus. I never have this kind of questions in my mind. So the thing is, sitting in Germany and uh, talking with you, having a lot of good discussions is very easy here. But in my country, we are all having problems. We have so many problems. We don't have enough jobs. We have so many unemployed people, good skilled people, but don't have jobs. So they're looking for jobs. So they are running, after, running away from the real Islam. And they are looking for, I don't know what they're looking for, what they're running for, I don't know. Maybe they're running for money. So, yes, they... but it's not that, but if we, we want to say, okay, um, they're looking for jobs. So my question is, Muslim countries are incredibly rich. Because uh, if they were not rich, they wouldn't have been colonized. Only okay, so let's start with that. There, there is richness in the Muslim country. There are resources there. There are land. There is a lot of stuff there. So the question is, if our Muslim people are going to the West to find work, that means that there is something wrong in the country that even though it is has enough riches to be colonized by the Western people, by the British in Bangladesh and India and Pakistan, but for some reason, we managing our country were not being able to use so when the british came they were able to take our resources and use it when we took over we can't use our resources and manage ourselves islam is not just how i pray five times a day and whether the wudu is hand down or hand up and all this kind of ritualistic stuff islam is also about building a community Community means also economic power, meaning that I use the resources I have. I have some kind of power. So if they are not, if we don't have the community, we have to start really asking ourselves the questions. What is Islam doing? What is our version? I'm not about the Islam itself. What's our version of our understanding for religion? Why is our understanding of religion not building a community that can sustain jobs for our people? As you say, uh, the, the country that are not colonized by British or other countries, they are the rich. So can you mention four or five rich countries who, uh, who follow Islamic laws? Saudi Arabia, I, I, Qatar and... I, like what? Uh, the, um, I wouldn't say there's any countries that, let's say, Muslim majority, which is technically free. I mean, uh, if I make a list of Islamic countries who are rich, I can see only four or five names, not more than that. 
Maybe Southern. No, but it, no, 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 no. I wouldn't say any kind of. Uh, I wouldn't say rich. I mean, like, uh, you mean rich in resources or the rich in society? Okay, that's a good question. What do? There's two different things. Like, let's say in the Gulf area, yes, they are rich in resources, but other rich in society. Uh, there's a lot of poverty in that region, so I wouldn't say that. Okay, then I have uh, one more question, sir, which is relevant here. For example, uh, there are a lot of uh, foreigners in Germany, so. Uh, uh, they came to Germany, and they become they become uh, Germans by having German passports. So now uh, they're planning to move in uh, Gulf countries, Middle East countries, because to have Islamic cultures. Is it possible? My opinion, personal opinion, is they're running away from their destiny. If they came to Germany, then they, there is something in Qadr, something in destiny that tells them that you are here to come. And because they don't want to take responsibility of them building the community here, they want to run away to another community, which is also a failed community. So whatever country they're going to, it's a failed community. Although if it was a successful community, they wouldn't have come to Germany first. They would have went directly there. So the fact that they're running away from me means that they are... But the thing is, uh, Germany is easier to come because it's free education. But if you're applying in, in, in Islamic rich countries, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, they don't have that kind of facilities. I guess it's not so easy like Germany. So if you if people want to move to Saudi Arabia. I'm just giving you that's a fact. I'm just example. Let, let them move. Let them move. Uh, if they are ignorant enough to know about the situation of the Asian people in Saudi Arabia, they know. let them move there and say they live in an Islamic country like slaves. So I what do you want to be? A free in a non-Muslim country or a slave in a Muslim country, it's up to them to decide. Let me because just. Let me, let me. If we want to talk about racism in Germany, I would say whoever wants to talk about racism in Germany, let them first talk about racism in our countries first, and then once we really highlight the racism in our countries first, against Asian, against you know colorism. So even in the same country, like in Bangladesh or in India and Pakistan, you know someone with a light skin, and I know I pass like a, you know I pass as white. Uh, compared to darker skin, the racism there within the same country is incredible. And somehow we want to, you know, blame the Germans for being racist, where we, our race, are like, racist to our own people. It's like hypocrisy, right? It so. is incredible. That's, that's like the pinnacle of hypocrisy. And the Quran is very clear about where the where the hypocrites will go in the afterlife. Like there are like so many ayah that describe the hypocrites are the even worse than the kuffar probably, because. Kafar, at least he says, I'm Kafir, you know, like, I don't believe in God, I believe in this God, or I believe yeah. in this or that. The Munafik is someone who tells you I believe in God, but then comes and then destroys the community from the inside. And I think the Munafik is way more dangerous to the Muslim community than a Kafir. A Kafir is on the other side. A Munafik is the, like the mole within your community that's going to bring something down. Okay. I have seen, uh, I can see a lot of books behind your uh, shelf. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bookworm, so it's just like my hobby, I read books. How many books, uh, or what kind of interest do you have? Uh, well, I, I haven't counted my books, but it's like a small portion of it. I have in other places, other books. It's, it's a lot, there are really a lot of books. Like you see in the picture, it's just like a... How do you yeah. manage time to read all of Did you read all the books or not? Well, it, well obviously I've read most of them, 99%, but I have no TV. And I make sure that I don't watch TV, I don't watch films, maybe... I do watch films, obviously, and series, but that's maybe once a week I spend two or three hours maximum on a film what or a series. Of, uh, what kind of movies or, or music you, you, you like to watch or allow well, this? And it's, it's, a, it's a matter of taste. So people have different tastes, different music. It's like what it's asking me, like, what do you like to eat? Uh, it's it's a taste issue. So okay, the question is then, OK, the, the question is, let like, me just make it easier for you. So you said movies and music. So I have some perceptions that, for example, we are bringing after watching a lot of Indian movies. Though I hate Indian movies, I don't like them because they're most of them copies from, from other cultures. So uh, my question is, uh, Tell me about uh, what Islam says about uh, watching movies or what kind of movies we can see or what kind of music we can hear. What is okay, uh, first of all, I, I want to make sure things clear. I'm not a scholar of Islam. I'm not a sheikh, not an imam. So I'm not here to make fatwas or it's, it's a personal preference. Uh, some sheikhs and, uh, you know, they have their own fatwas and all of that. 
it's up to the person to listen to the uh, you know to the fatwa of the sheikh or not to listen again the meaning of a fatwa is an opinion and this is quite important to understand that in arabic as the arabs have understood it in the ages before because i've read a lot of arabic history i know quite a lot on this topic when you know during the thousand years ago during the arabic history when they talk about a fatwa it was an opinion so the scholars say my opinion on the matter is and then you have other opinions but the question I, but now what has turned into that fatwa is some kind of a legal binding of halal and haram and if you don't follow this fatwa you're going to go to hell and you're you're sinning left and right uh, since i'm not a an imam and i'm not a scholar i am not going to give a, a like a like okay. you want to be islam's opinion on fatwa i know that i understand you are not a certified person to uh, to uh, answer this question but i'm not satisfied at all to know, answer this okay you know you have read quran you have you have read a lot of hadith right so can you uh, can you tell me one one lines or reference from quran where it mentions music or video is haram do you know about anything do you know okay let's say whether films is haram or halal uh the fact that films it's like asking is a car haram or halal because a car some people like if you want to use this kind of logic um then i can say the car is haram so that means because the person, we use cameras so why you do cars so films has the same thing that means as for music they let's say the country or the cult the, the um the societies that hasn't been affected by the salafi infiltration of everything in society music is okay for them i mean we have to understand that this kind of you know, the, the anti music kind of thing is a very very salafi point of view any sufi would disagree with that there has been many sufis before and many sufi societies and in africa and in the middle east and all the sufi groups they all use music in in religion itself in the here you were talking about music so my question is i mean i have seen in, i i am listening a lot of indian music so what kind of music you are talking about because if we break down the music so the right now the current music i hate it i don't like it but you are talking about the old music yeah, yeah okay it was fine but uh, if it's a issue i mean considering the issues with the community and we're discussing if music is halal and haram we're discussing the wrong issue we are like if someone's house is burning like really the house is on fire burning and is falling down and he's wondering am i going to uh, you know switch the light on or off I yeah, my brother there's no house you know the house is burning i mean switching the light on and off is irrelevant in this case comparing with those big problems this is nothing so we should focus on the main on the big problem there like once once we get you know a in, in a society that everyone is fed we have no poverty you know we have you know some kind of decent human rights in the islamic world because uh, i i want to see a muslim country with a human right without any kind of violations to the workers to the foreigners to anything like that once we solve these problems first the big problems then let's talk about the music it's it's incredibly irrelevant in the scheme of things yeah, perfect thank you for the clarification that that was really so specific okay so now let's come to the um, come to the point so as you say that, that in germany we don't have a community but we someone should take the responsibility and as we have so many groups in germany so it is not so easy right so what is your opinion on how or where, how should you start to building a community or um, well the first thing with starting building a community is to come back to an islamic identity and not bangladeshi identity not moroccan identity lebanese or any nationalistic identity the first major hurdle let's say in germany is that because the people see themselves as a nation of their own country first and muslims later so it's muslim is a second identity they have and not the first one i am a lebanese and then i'm muslim they have to really switch this around say i'm a muslim who is living in germany there's a reason why god has put me here and i will try to serve the community in germany the muslim community so that we can all serve every community it's not only about muslim community muslims should lift up whatever community they are in 
if you are in the German community, I'd say like, you know, our fellow Christian brothers are in suffering, sisters are suffering, versus that, then we should help them lift up as well. Uh, they would say, it's not, I'm not talking about conversion to Islam, because that's a totally different thing. But like, then stay Christians. But also, if we can help them, we should help them. At the moment, we can't even help ourselves, let alone help others. Yeah. And unfortunately, it's not also about helping ourselves. I think like some Muslims in Germany are bringing the community down. Because unfortunately, um, the crime rate um, along, you know, in people from Muslim countries, it's really much, much higher than, let's say, other communities. Okay, the German one and other ones. I think Saudi Arabia has the, has the lowest crime rate in the world, I guess. Well, it, no, no, yeah, true. It, we're not comparing that to other countries. We're talking about like here, just between the the crimes foreigners do in numbers compared okay, to the really, non yes, really? I didn't know that. Okay. It is actually higher, way higher than the other one. It's unfortunate. It's a fact. We need to really accept that it's not just racism that's against us. We are against you ourselves. Say, you just say that you just say that the, the, the Muslims in Germany, uh, their crime rates are higher than the Germans. Yes. And yes, these are facts. Did you, did you mention mentions any countries' names? Only all just in general Muslims. I'm not going to mention countries' names. So okay, what background right. they come in? Because I don't want to, you know, yeah, uh, include yeah. any, you know, a certain group against others. But the fact that they are consider themselves Muslims with beard and say Mashallah, Alhamdulillah, and they go and commit right. crime, you know, later. That but is my issue. The if, is, not, if you say that uh, the, the crime rates are higher, so do you have any reference? How did you know about it? Well, unfortunately, it is uh, you know it's in the media, and media. yes, I mean the, the AfD when you know the party we're talking about, they use numbers. They are re they manipulate the outcome, but the numbers are real because the com numbers are statistical numbers from the uh, you know criminal Bundesamt, you know the Office for Criminal. Uh, statistics. So the numbers are real. It's just that they try to twist the numbers to showcase that all foreigners are, you know, immigrant, you know, criminals and all of that. So the conclusion is wrong, but the base that they're using, unfortunately, the pure numbers, it's right. So well, let's say when we talk about criminality in Germany, we talk about certain clans and they come from certain Muslim background. I, just, and I, just, I want to give you this one two minutes. So, um, as you say, the Muslims are more crimes in Germany. So, what should you do right now? I don't know what I said. I said that like, people with a Muslim background do more crimes in Germany. I'm not saying Why? Muslims do more crimes. Well, Muslim, Muslim background, like Muslim background in a way that Germans perceive you as Muslim and that's it. As they perceive you as, you know, one of them, one of us, like Muslims. Because a Muslim, a real Muslim, should not commit crime. Exactly. Like, because we're talking, this is not like a small crime, we're talking like this organized crime. There is intention and there's like a structure, there's a, you know, a whole mafia behind all of this. So this is like intentional thing. So a Muslim would never do stuff like that. So when I talk about those criminals, they are from a Muslim background, from a Muslim background country, and they perceive themselves as Muslim, but they give themselves a fatwa that can do crimes because it's a kuffar country and as long as they're, you know, stealing from them as a kuffar, it's okay. Which is, I would consider, it's like the biggest hypocrisy and it's like destroying our reputation in Germany uh, because we do have a bad reputation. It's destroying our credibility and it's very unfortunate. So the thing that the thing is that I've understood. So uh, you were talking about those kind of Muslims. Uh, maybe the people who are not legal. Maybe they are doing more crimes. No, 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 no. They are, no, no. They are here legal. They have been here for generations. I'm not talking about asylum seekers recently. In general, no, like in general, okay. Maybe not can it, asylum seekers. Can it, maybe it can be. They 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 try to. Uh, they try to make the victims Muslim. The, the victims. To, to show them, okay. I, I would, I no, I wouldn't say that. I, I wouldn't say if the if the victim, you know, um, if the perpetrator is Muslim or from a Muslim background, from I, like again, I would say Muslim or say Muslim background, it is like that. I mean, yes, maybe, it, it would be used they, in the media. Maybe when they use Muslims' word, maybe they have more TRPs. Maybe that's why they use Muslims' word. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, I agree hundred percent. But the fact is correct. The, but it has been used. But that's why it makes me very sad. Because they are using actually, because we have to admit it, it is happening. 
We have to admit that Except the Muslim that. Bannon people, it is, it is happening. We are a little bit more criminal than others. We have to accept that. Instead of pushing it on the Germans, saying that they're racist, we should be working on our community, on our kids, our youth, our male youth. Okay, because it's not like our women are doing the crimes or our girls are doing the crime. It's always our youth, the men are doing the crime. We do have a problem there in the Muslim community. I work in schools. I see them. I see the effect of that. I see all the problems that come from that. So we have to accept that. We have to take responsibility. And this is why I say when people, you know, get out from here because there is no community. So you are getting out from here, leaving your responsibility, which I would personally believe that if you're here, were given the chance to come here, then there must be a plan from God for you to be here, you know, to do something good in this country, to do something positive in this country. And you just left. So for me, it's like abdicating responsibility because you want it an easy life. You want to go where you don't have to do all of that, but you will always pay the price. You will always pay the price. You leave Germany, you go to a Gulf country, Asian, you know, dark skin, you're going to be treated like a slave, sir. And that is up to them. If they want to pay the price for their kids to be treated like that, that's up to them. Actually, uh, uh, I, I worked in a company where I deal every day more than 20 uh, people from, from Arabian country. So uh, they ask me, uh, where are you from, blah, blah, blah. Then I say, I'm from Bangladesh and studying and doing also work here. And then just they just say, Bangladesh, okay. So like, it's, it's a, I can feel a smell of, uh, you know, like... Uh, Racism. Slave, slavery, I mean. Yeah. It, when, yes, when, when it is. Bangladesh, like, oh, you are my slave. <laughs> You are my slave in my country, like this kind of. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. and this is why when people say you want to go, you know, to this kind of. Yeah, there's the reason. There's the reason they only take from our country the the people who doesn't have any educations, only to do their true. slavery work. That's the truth, I think. That's why. Yeah, no, it is hundred percent true. I mean, there's so, no doubt about that. Thank you so much, uh, Osama. We are running uh, running out of time, so we have only. You're here. most welcome. Um, hopefully, you are, you know, hopefully I was able to help you and help your viewers and hopefully uh, some of them will be. Yeah, so this is the you know, uh, this is the first shows we are doing and uh, hopefully we will continue it because we have so many topics in the future. There are so many topics in the future. You're most welcome. Weekly, maybe. So I'm just going to stop the recording and then we will talk.